What's up, everybody? I'm Z Wade, the Z Wade, and Z Wade Photo, and it's time for the actual first look at the 24 millimeter f 1.8s. Now, there will be a link to a video in the description so you can see the used, like new, my ass, uh, version of this lens that I got from MPB. Since that was a mess and it was broken, it got sent back. I just went ahead and bought one new from BH. Uh, because I trust B&H. Literally don't think I've ever had a problem with B&H. First thing in the box we get is the lens sock. And in usual fashion, we're going to see if we can wear this like a chef hat or an orthodox priest hat. We can't. It's far too small. We have the instructions and the warranty. Excellent packaging, am I right? We have the lens hood. It is the typical plastic fare. Let's go ahead and get this out of the plastic. Get the plastic back in here, keep the lens hood out, and now we've got everything boxed back up in our original packaging, and this will go in the closet with all of my other original packaging. Every single piece of plastic, bubble wrap, instructions, everything. Keep everything, guys. Now we can take a look at the lens. The lens has some heft to it for its size, and I actually kind of like the form factor and the shape of this lens. The 20 millimeter, now looks don't matter, but the 20 millimeter f 1.8s uh, looks a little silly, but it is a marvelous lens. It's actually recording me right now. Uh, this, however, um, is just a little better looking design wise. Actually, first I want to do this. <laughs> Watch that other video if you want to if you want to hear what this should not sound like. Now we could take a look at the focus ring. It can be done with one finger. It's a little tight. Firm, I should say, not tight. Firm, deliberate, very nice. Let's look at the front element. It's brand new, so it's perfect. Look at the rear element. It's brand new, so it's perfect. Auto manual switch is nice and clicky. So if I'm being honest, this feels exactly like a Z lens. It's, it's what you would expect if you have other Z lenses. It's a nice form factor, fits good in the hand, got some nice weight to it, nice attractive, slightly bulbous front element. Uh, I think maybe we need to put this on, uh, let's say the Z8 and see how it feels. Actually, first we'll put this on the Z5 because I wanna test out the focusing on the Z8. So if you have a Z5 or a Z6, Z7, the Z5 is a little bit lighter than the Z6 and 6.2 and 7 and 7.2, if I remember correctly. It's a very lightweight kind of camera. Feels excellent on the front of this camera. Looks good, feels good, is good. I still haven't had the Z8 issue of lenses not mounting on any of my lenses, by the way. And this is a perfectly machined fit. It fits absolutely perfect, no slop. Test out the focusing here. Let's, uh... So I'd say the focusing speed is uh, pretty reasonable. It's not lightning fast, but it's not really, really slow. Now, what's interesting is that this lens also just like the one from yesterday, it does not do manual focus override. And this would be the only lens in this entire Z lineup that doesn't do it. I tested out other lenses on the Z8, so I know it's not the Z8 problem. But what I'm noticing is whenever I'm shining this down the hall, this light is not glaring and causing haze like the one from MPB that had the rattle. And so that makes me think that the rattle was not a component that controls manual focus override, but it may be something worse like an element, right? So there may be a loose element in there because this is not glaring. And the other one looking down the hall, it was like, I couldn't tell if it was like a screw up or if it was just bad flaring. This lens, at least right here, is not flaring particularly bad, whereas the other one I could barely see down the hallway. So that leads me to believe that the other one from MPB was legit, like there's like an element loose or cockeyed or, or free floating around in there, uh, not connected. So I didn't take any test shots with it, so I, I won't be able to observe the MPB. It's already been sent back. I won't be able to tell if there is a, a loose element in there, but just based off the glare, there was clearly something wrong with that, but I don't like that this won't manual focus override, and I don't know why it won't. Literally every other lens does, 
Unless it's something maybe just in firmware. Yeah, so what, what would one use this lens for? Well, you could use this for just walking around every day kind of stuff. You could use it for uh, street photography, architecture. Uh, you could use it for scenic portraits, which is kind of in line with what I would use it for. That's what I generally use the 20 millimeter for. It would probably be a little bit nicer for street photography uh, where 24 and 20 millimeter isn't, doesn't seem like a huge difference. It's really not millimeter wise, but as far as the funky cool look, yeah, uh, there's going to be a difference in the 20 millimeter and the 24. The 20 has that kind of weird uh, kind of warp look to it. That's what I like about it. But if you don't like that, this is going to be better for your street photography and things like that. Now, what am I specifically using this for? I bought this specifically to sit in the corner doing video in my studio for the new type of content that I'm putting out, which by the way, now is a good time to mention, if you want to get all Z-Wade Photo content early as well as unique content for members only and uncensored content, you should consider becoming a member of the Z-Wade Photo YouTube channel today. Other than that, I guess really the only thing left for me to do is to uh, wait until a day that's a lot sunnier because it's gray and disgusting outside today to actually take some sample shots and see what this is going to do, even though I don't really have much of an interest in using this for photography. I am curious. I know you guys are too. So until then, I'm Z-Wade, the Z-Wade, and Z-Wade Photo. Stay sharp, YouTube.